I'm going to, I'm going to push back against you. I'm going to, I'm going to push back with what I got out of deep work, which is, so I live in a big house with my wife's family. Uh, we, we now have her grandparents here as well. They came back from the village. So the two grandparents, my wife's mother, my two children, uh, her aunt and uncle and great aunt and cousin once removed or something downstairs. So it's a lot of people and they're all up in each other's business all the time. Every mm -hmm. decision, everything you're doing, should you really be doing that? Every decision you've made, what are the problems that are gonna happen with that? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a problem logging into this web page. You come and help me, you know about computers. Uh, Daddy, won't you play with me? You know, this sort of thing. And uh, I would love to be a deep, I, I do love to be a deep part of the family. Um, but I need to work sometimes. I, I need to have not just five minutes, but a good 90 minutes writing on my computer in order to write something and not just random notes mm -hmm. uh, in order for there to be a sense of coherence to the, the scene that I've written. I need to have spent about 90 minutes of uninterrupted time on it. And I've, mm -hmm. I've found that out experimentally. Mm -hmm. um, and the same is true for, of course, when I'm teaching my classes, I can't be interrupted. And uh, when I'm preparing for my classes. Um, and I've also noticed that with things like the internet or newspapers or audiobooks, that uh, I begin to have a thought and then something external comes in and cuts it off. Uh, and so that's what I think of as distraction. I think of distraction not as something that is off of the path I'm on, that might be something useful or interesting. I think of distraction as something that comes and pushes me off the path I'm on. Uh, and then I can't find the path again. I don't remember what the beginning of the thought I was having was. So it just evaporates. I don't, I don't have it anymore. Uh, I think I have more fear and anxiety about that than I ought to. But it is a real problem. It is a problem. It's a real, it's a real thing. I, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, like when my daughter was very young and she was around and I'm working, you know, uh, that's what notepads were for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that mm -hmm. interruption is coming, yeah. right? Just scribble down, you know, remember to look up Josh. And, right. and then when the event is over with, oh yeah, Josh, yeah. Um, that, that kind of thing. So, I mean, there's that. I, I think too that, um, I think that we have to construct devices for unplugging from things. I don't think that, you know, being, you know, driven to distraction is, is a helpful thing. That's a good um, expression, driven to, because you're not the one driving. Yeah. Yeah, um, so I don't think that's necessarily a helpful thing. Uh, at the same time, I, I really feel that there's a kind of imprisonment that we can construct yes. that is just hurtful mm -hmm. to ourselves. Yeah. And, and, and I think there are deep rationales like certain forms of monasticism, certain, as, certain ways that you can come at monasticism, let me put okay. it that way, certain ways you can come to monasticism that are just not great ideas yeah. and, uh, and don't help us yeah. um, solve, solve what, we're, what we're trying to resolve. Yeah. So I, I'm, you know, I want to add very quickly that I think that that um, I have known people and admired people who have found in monasticism a real joy, and and I mean that it, it by all my understanding was a real joy for them. 
So I just think it's one of the billions of strategies on the planet yeah. for living. And, and they, they all work. But if you're, if you're asking me to think about uh, Newport's approach, um, I, I find it, you know, like a lentil soup when it's a little lean, you know, and it's kind of too much water. That's, <laughs> that's kind of what I feel like mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in, 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 that, in that book. I can taste that soup. <laughs> my, wife, my wife's grandma makes that soup. <laughs> and she puts, this is a, this is a Bulgarian culinary quirk is is using spearmint as a sweet as a savory spice so uh -huh. it's lentil so imagine this water lentil soup with spearmint in it and you're like right. it's it's just not for me yeah um, I, I feel you, so, I, I feel you about that. <laughs> um, I, i'm but, trying to think of ways i could extend the metaphor but <laughs> put some cheese in it i don't know <laughs> but but that's that's how i you know that's how i feel about about that approach, mm -hmm. you know? And there are just so many things like, I don't know if you've ever read, um, well, there are just so many things like, like the ways, the tools we can use for, you know, for shaking up our heads and, mm. and, and he, he, he doesn't, strike me as somebody that wants to do that yeah um, well i think he's like me i think that he is surrounded in a sea of in a, in a sort of multimedia static that uh after a while it just becomes impossible to do anything um, <laughs> he's written another book that i didn't use in my classes and i and i don't recommend to you paul uh of that's uh what was it called digital minimalism, I think, um, where his fear comes through a lot more clearly. His fear uh, that if you, if you let it, the internet will just take over your life and will drive you in distraction. And you will just sit in front of your, your smartphone scrolling all day and never do anything with your life. Uh, and I thought that was a bit much, but I feel that fear too. Um, and I keep, you know, Pavlina keeps telling me not to be so worried about it. But I remember having conversations. I, I'm remembering this guy I met in Montana when I was visiting, um, who said he was he was a musician in a band. Okay. Uh, and he had some other job that paid the bills. But we talked about how he, he used to, we talked about books. And he was like, I used to read Russian uh, literature when I was in college. Uh, but now I don't read anything. I haven't read a book in years. Uh, all I, because whenever I sit down, I just pull out my phone and I start scrolling it. And the scroll is infinite. So I just do that until I run out of time. Uh, and I was but like- Don't you think there's a simple solution to that? Like, oh, I can't do this. And click, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, just, you know, it, it's like, you know, when I was, kid you know and you go to these parties and you know people would be throwing up and drinking and you think after a while they oh. stop doing that <laughs> you know you just go right. you know? um i know you love it but it's not for me mm -hmm. i'm out of here mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know that's that's i think that's part of I think there's a I think there's a useful distinction to be made between uh, being fearful of something and recognizing that it's harmful to you and caring for and loving yourself. Hmm. And that is to say, you know, if, if I if if I if this frightens me, okay, it's a big scary thing. But there's no reason I need to be here for it. Yeah. It doesn't own me. And, um, and I care for myself. So I'm putting the phone down. 
or I'm taking the bus, or I'm, you know, walking away, yeah. whatever, yeah. Um, because I have regard for myself. I think there's this thing where, you know, what's out there and what's advertised is, you know, it's like the things my phone can do. I don't care about the things my phone can do. Yeah. I mean, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to my daughter. I want to talk to a few other people. Um, when I'm when I'm outside working in the park, I want to be able to work on my computer and talk to somebody who's feeding me information. Other than that, I don't care what my phone can do. Yeah, you know, and and so um, and I also don't care what's on Facebook. <laughs> I don't care. That was a. I agree. I I don't care either. But that was a that was a hard transformation. It was a hard transformation to stop caring about what was on Facebook. Yeah, I I I, I mean I, I'll be honest with you. I I was never. I never. You never cared. Listen, here's, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why should. <laughs> I forgot who asked this question, but I thought it was a great question. Why should we be glued to the product, the products of a, a social media developed by one of the most socially awkward people in the world? <laughs> it's true. It, it does. It does make <laughs> you wonder. Why? Why? Why should I? Why should I care about what this guy and what this group of people think? Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. well, to the extent that, you know, I do care about what they do that's dangerous, but, but I simply don't care what they think I like. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm just not interested in that. And, yeah. and so, you know, I, I check on you, I check on a bunch of my friends, I'm done. Right. Well, and this is something that uh, the Newport does talk about. He talks about the difference between passive and active use of social media, but I think you could extend this to anything. You know, are you passively drinking alcohol or are you actively drinking it? That's the difference between addiction and not. Uh, no. And uh, are you flying the plane or is the plane flying you? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I think that he, I think that he makes that point well. And I think that it's so. For example, Pavlina says I, I talked about this in the car with her today, and uh, she said that what she got out of the book, and she also didn't like it very much, but mm. she but she got out of it that um, there are defaults that you have that you might fall into. You might you might mm -hmm. find yourself in a rut. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it takes a, it takes some willpower to pull yourself out of it. And mm -hmm. willpower is like a muscle that you can exercise and get stronger. But it's also like a muscle in the sense that you only have so much that you can do with it in a particular day. Uh, after a while, you're just tired and you can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, therefore you can uh, get yourself out of one rut or two ruts perhaps per day. Uh, and otherwise, you have to uh, be careful not to get into them in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I th yeah, I, I think that, I think that it really is about you know the what I uh, on the most plain spoken level. One of the things I grew up with in New York was a was in a community of people who who as a urban culture were just very self-determined. You know, um, I decide what I want to do and and that's what I'm doing. And and no one is going to take that away from me. Yeah. And I think this, you know, a lot of this comes because we were 
you know, we were an immigrant culture. We were, you know, we were here to make our place in the world. And after risking so much, I'm not going to give it up to this guy just because he says so. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, the, and then the other side of that was that there were so many of us and we were all so different from one another that the real, the enriching choice was to borrow. You know, let me, let me borrow this, this opinion, let me borrow this yeah. skill, let me borrow this perspective, let me, you know, yeah. and, and, and create myself. Yeah, and, that's what I do too. Yeah, and, and I think that um, I also think that, that as an artist, that's just an intuitive uh, reaction to the world. Oh, I can use that. Or oh, maybe I can use this too. Oh, no. because, because what I'm doing is building worlds. Yeah. And, and I'm not gonna do that out of my own head. Yeah. I need everything I can get. Right, right. And you can, you can see with uh, artists and with authors who have uh, stopped referring to the outside world. Yeah. Not, yeah. It's not good for their work. Yeah, I, I mean, you know. And so I suppose that's the other thing. Newport is just kind of antithetical to what I need to do in order to live. You know, um, he, he's developing this kind of narrowing. And, and as I'm living, I'm getting larger and larger and larger and larger in my, in my view and, and um, uh, in my languages and in my, my understanding of, of custom and uh, all those things are, are changing. Yeah. Okay, I think that we're, we're out of time. So okay. let, let that be the, the, la the last word. Um, I will also though recommend some other books that uh, in terms of picking up tools that might be useful uh, mm -hmm. in this sort of magpie way. Uh, I did find some useful things in, in uh, deep work. I think I found more useful things in uh, Make Time. And mm -hmm. uh, the other book that came to me was Chatter. Um, was what? Was Chatter. The name, oh, of the, author, the name of the author escapes me, but I'll write it in, mm -hmm. uh, in the YouTube thing. Okay. Uh, so our, our viewers who may want to uh, find some different perspectives on this problem uh, mm -hmm. can read those books. And of course they can read the, the Craftsman, which we have already talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So next time you can, you can suggest our next book, Paul. And All I right. will, I'll excoriate that one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you like it. <laughs> um, well, I don't, I don't have that kind of stake in it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I right. mean, whatever you think is what you think. And, and the whole point is to get more thoughts in the pot. So um, I but think that should, would be- You should recommend the next book so that, that uh, you put some more thoughts in my pot. All right, I'll do that. I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Yeah. Um, hmm. I just had a thought, but I'll okay. I'll save it for offline. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much for this. It was great. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. We will. Yeah. This is this is I guess our second season, even better yes. than the first one. <laughs> back for season two. <laughs> Come back for season two, right? I've been watching the Muppets recently. Yeah, uh, really. The girl. Like, Come back next week when you hear Gonzo say, "That wasn't my chicken." <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Well, I've got to dash off to a meeting. I'm sure you have a class. Yeah. So, um, have a wonderful day. Okay, and thank you again. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, do you want to stop cloud recording?